أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته and welcome to session number 20 of our eschatology podcast which will inshallah be the last session or the last episode of this last season if we should call it that and inshallah we will do another season later on inshallah when we will actually go much much deeper into the science and look at now the finer components that uh, revolve around the eschatology or islamic eschatology so what i want to do inshallah is now conclude in this episode about this dynamic between Adam and Iblis and this whole concept that we said about the rise of ideology and the source origin of ideology. So let's look now more at what transpired now once these events had taken place, what ensued as now a conclusion of this event in which Adam السلام, was given a task and he was told not to approach a particular tree and then he failed in that and then Iblis likewise was also given a directive and he failed at that. So what was the conclusion of all this? So if we look at now what Adam alayhi salam did, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah At-Taha فَأَكَلَا مِنْهَا فَبَدَتْ لَهُمَا سَوْآتُهُمَا وَالطَّفِقَ يَخْصِفَانِ عَلَيْهِمَا مِنْ وَرَقِ الْجَنَّةِ and so they both ate from this tree. If you look at the pronoun that is applied to that, فَأَكَلَا they, There is an alif at the end which denotes the dual pronoun. فَأَكَلَا Both of them they consumed from this tree. And then both of their shame was exposed to them. And then they covered themselves up with the leaves of paradise. وَعَصَى آدَمُ رَبُّهُ فَغَوَى So in this regard, Adam disobeyed his Lord. وَعَصَى He disobeyed his Lord. And he lost his way. So what transpired then? Once he lost his way, what, what happened? Did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala simply leave him, simply abandon him, simply condemn him? Now you've disobeyed. It's hellfire for you. No. There was a moment that was allowed to both of these individuals, to Adam and to, to Iblis. Yani to, for, to Adam and Hawa and to Iblis. Adam alayhi salam and Hawa, they actually repented. قَالَ They said رَبَّنَا ظَلَمْنَا أَنفُسَنَا وَإِن لَمْ تَغْفِرْ لَنَا وَتَرْحَمْنَا لَنَكُونَنَّ مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ They said, O oh our Lord, we have wronged ourselves. Now if you remember when he gave them the prohibition and told them do not approach this tree, that you may become مِنَ الظَّالِمِينَ You may become among those who are committing ظلم. What was this ظلم? We say that this ظلم is against the self. They have wronged themselves. So when you commit a sin, when you commit an error, you're not affecting the Lord of the worlds. Though you may affect the rest of creation, ultimately deep down you are actually affecting yourself. This is the dua now. You can see the purity of this thought, this prime thought. What does it really entail at its, at its purest aspect? The wrongdoing is wrongdoing unto yourself. And this is why they say we have wronged ourselves. If you don't turn to us, if you don't turn to us with forgiveness, if you don't forgive us and have mercy on us, we will become among the losers. We are going to lose completely. There is nothing because only you can sustain us. So this is how Adam alayhi salam conducted himself. And so Adam alayhi salam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then accepted the tawbah from him. فَتَلَقَّى آدَمُ مِنْ رَبِّهِ كَلِمَاتٍ فَتَابَ عَلَيْهِ Adam was inspired by the words of his Lord. And so he, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, accepted his repentance. Because indeed, he is the acceptor of repentance and the most merciful. This was the core lesson from that. You made a mistake. Adam's ability was now triggered. Rather than allow his concupiscence to argue for him or his irascibility to argue for him he allowed his intellect to argue for him this is pure logic you were given a directive from your lord you made a mistake and did not obey your lord 
Ergo, you made a mistake, you should seek forgiveness from your Lord. This is pure intellection that Adam is exhibiting from this. As compared to Iblis on this case, who did not allow his intellection to take place, to think I disobeyed my Lord and I should ask for forgiveness, rather he allowed his concupiscence and irascibility to argue on his behalf. This further ratifies the true governor, what the Khalifa really is who the Khalifa really is. This is what is being demonstrated now between these two. You Iblis, you disobeyed. You Adam, you disobeyed. You Iblis are arguing on this account and saying it was somebody else's fault. You're blaming me for this. Rather, it was your own fault. But see what Adam has done, even though he made a mistake as well. So they were both given directives and they both disobeyed. But Iblis is now proven you are actually not better than him, you are worse. Iblis' argument, his whole logic was now nullified. You are not better than him. Because when he disobeyed, he asked for forgiveness. When you disobeyed, you are arrogant about it. How could you be better than him? It doesn't matter what your composition is. I am the one who gave you that composition. But you did not fulfill your role as a being. And this is why you are now a cursed individual. And that's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then tells him, فَخْرُجْ مِنْهَا فَإِنَّكَ رَجِيمٌ Get out of here. Indeed you are cursed. وَإِنَّكَ عَلَيْكَ لَعْنَةَ إِلَى يَوْمِ الدِّينَ Upon you is a curse until the day of resurrection. Even then he tried to, you know, فَأَنذِرْنِي قَالَ رَبِّي فَأَنذِرْنِي Give me reprieve until the day of resurrection, he asked. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, قَالَ فَإِنَّكَ مِنَ الْمُنذِرِينَ Go ahead, you will be given reprieve till that day. إِلَى يَوْمِ الْوَقْتِ الْمَعْلُومِ Until that appointed day. He then says, قَالَ رَبِّي بِمَا أَغْوَيْتَنِي لَأُزِيَنَّنَا لَهُمْ فِي الْأَرْضِ وَلَا أُغْوِيَنَّهُمْ أَجْمَعِينَ Because you led me astray, I am going to tempt them on the earth and I'm going to mislead all of them. Illa ibadaka minhumul mukhlasin. Except for those who are mukhlis, who are sincere among them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Hada siratun aliyya mustaqim. This pathway to me is binding. You cannot change those who are on this pathway. Inna ibadi laysa laka alayhim sultanun illa manittabaka min al ghawin. You will have no authority over those servants of mine except for those who are deviant and who follow you. So you have got two primary ideologies here, if you want to call it an ideology. I'm, I'm keeping on using this word, but I don't think it should be appropriately used in this regard. You've got two primary schools of thought here that the human being can follow in terms of his rationality and understanding. You either follow the school of thought that is guided by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or you follow the school of thought that is being proposed by Iblis and his ilk. This is it. There's no other derivative that you, you can come up with. It's only this pathway or that pathway. Either you take the pathway that leads to guidance and that guidance leads to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or you follow Iblis and then you follow him all the way to the hellfire. وَإِنَّ جَهَنَّمَا لَمَوْعِدُهُمْ أَجْمَعِينَ Surely hellfire is their destined place. All together, all of them. Whoever follows you is going to follow you to the hellfire. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now tells them, قُلْ نَهْبِتُ مِنْهَا جَمِيعًا All of you descend now. Jamia, all of you. Yani Adam, Hawa, and Iblis. All of them out. فَإِمَّا يَأْتِيَنَّكُمْ مِنِّي هُدًا فَمَنْ تَبِعَ هُدَايَا فَلَا خَوْفٌ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَا هُمْ يَحْزَنُونَ There will come guidance from me. Whoever follows that guidance will have no fear and nor will they be caught in depression and grief. They will have nothing to fear. In Surah Al-A'raf he says, قَالَ حَبِطَ مِنْهَا جَمِيعًا بَعْضُكُمْ لِبَعْدٍ أَدُوْ فَإِمَّا يَأْتِيَنَّكُمْ مِنِّي هُدًا فَمَنِ اتَّبَعَ هُدَايَا فَلَا يَضُلُّ وَلَا يَشْقَى Descend all of you together. Some of you will be enemies of others. Yani there will be groups among both your species that will be enemies unto each other. In other words, both of these categories will include the righteous and will also include the demonic. There are demons from mankind and there are righteous from mankind and there are demons from jinn kind 
and there are righteous from jinn kind as well it is not a human ideology nor is it a jinn ideology it is an ideology of right or wrong so some among the jinn will be righteous and they will follow that first prime thought the others will follow the other one and the, and the same applies to the human being so this is what he says fa imma ya'tiyannakum minni huda faman ittaba'a hudaya fala yadillu wa la yashqa there will be guidance that will come from me and whoever follows that guidance will not go astray nor will they suffer wa man a'rada an dhikri fa inna lahu ma'ishatan dhankan wa nahshuruhu yawm al-qiyamati a'ma whoever turns away from my guidance from my remembrance that person is going to have a miserable life and we will raise them up on the day of qiyamah as blind and then this individual will then say qala rabbi lima hashartani a'ma wa qad kuntu basiran why have you raised me a blind when i was able to see so well allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says unto this individual kadhalika atatka ayatuna fa nasitaha wa kadhalika al-yawm tunsa just the way when our signs came to you you neglected them so likewise you are being neglected today why should god almighty make you a priority when in your life he is just an option and this is the, the people are debating it is an option when they need god they will pray and when they don't need oh we are independent oh we are enlightened oh we are this that and the other وكذلك نجزي من اسرف ولم يؤمن بايات ربه ولا عذاب الاخره اشد وابقى this is how you will be rewarded those who transgress this is how they will be rewarded those who do not believe in what your lord has sent down as a revelation this is how you will be rewarded and that that punishment is going to be more severe and more lasting it's it's everlasting because this is the nature of the life that we have to go through قال اهبط بعضهم لبعض عدو الله سبحانه وتعالى says descend enemies unto each other ولكم في الارض مستقر ومتاع الهين you will find in the earth now a place of residence a place to stay and place to establish yourself as well as provision for the duration of your stay قال he said فيها تحيون وفيها تموتون ومنها تخرجون you are going to live there you are going to die there and then from there you will be exited you will be removed from there and you will be returned to your lord for final judgment so now it all depends on which pathway you are going to take alam naj'al lahu aynain wa lisanan wa shafatain wa hadaynahu najidain we have given him two eyes we have given him a tongue and two lips and we have shown him two pathways it is all up to you wa nafsi wa ma sawaha fa alhamaha fujuraha wa taqwaha qad aflaha man zakkaha wa qad khaba man dassaha the soul and allah who has proportioned the soul he has inspired it with both good and evil with vice and virtue the one who purifies it is the successor the one who succeeds and the one who then brings in other factors and tries to get through other means and and prevents the natural inclination the fitra from achieving its closeness and proximity to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the one who then capitulates to evil and follows the ideology of vice that person is the loser it's now as simple as that any ideology you want to pick you put it into that category you see are you going to be among those who are going to accept yes we made a mistake now we rectify or are you going to be among those like iblis who starts blaming this one that one and the other see nobody wants to fix themselves now everybody wants to point the fingers at somebody else you see it's the kufar they are the ones who are doing this you see it's it's this person who is doing it. it's those people who are doing this ideologically or 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 even politically we want to blame everybody else it's the zionists they are the ones you see if we just get rid of them let's amass the muslim armies and go and kill all the jews there's nothing wrong with muslims see we are muslims we are good we are chosen ones we we using the same ideology that the jews are using they are calling themselves the chosen ones and the favorites we're doing the same thing you see let's kill all the jews there's nothing wrong with being a muslim all the jews are bad let's kill those people see that ruler over there he's the one that's the problem you see the problem is is donald trump let's get rid of that guy everything will be fine the problem is erdogan you see that he's the one let's get rid of him he will everything will be fine the problem is bashar al assad get rid of him you see the problem is everyone says that one is the problem i am not the problem 
This is Iblis's ideology. It's you who led me astray. It's not me. I didn't do anything wrong. And he says, I'm going to approach them from the front, from the back, from the right and left. And you'll find most of them are ungrateful. From their front, from the rear, from their right, and from their left. You will find most of them to be ungrateful, ingrates. They are not appreciative of this ability that God Almighty has given them, has given Adam alayhi salam, this unique power of intellection, of abstraction of reality, of understanding more than just the form and the symbol. A majority of mankind are caught up in this cycle of just forms and things. You see stuff, this is, this is where their prime focus is. They go to work because they want to acquire things and they want to spend and to get, to get stuff. And then they go to work to pay off that stuff and then they fall into a state of depression and they buy more stuff and they go back to work just so that they can pay off those stuff. And this is where people are caught up in. This new device over here, this new entity there, that new film over there, this new game over here, you know, this is happening on this side and then that's happening on that side. Now this is the topic of conversation. So one thing happens over here, a fitna rises here, everyone's attention is turned to that fitna while other stuff is happening, they're completely heedless about it. And then they will blame this one and blame that one and blame the other, but nobody wants to fix themselves. Because they do not even want to exert this ability that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given them. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in this, وَلَقَدْ ذَرَأْنَا لِجَهَنَّمَ كَثِيرًا مِنَ الْجِنِّ وَالْإِنسِ We have prepared hellfire for many among those who are of the jinn and mankind. A majority are destined for hellfire. Why? لَهُمْ قُلُوبٌ لَا يَفْقَهُونَ بِهَا وَلَهُمْ أَعْيُنٌ لَا يُبْسِرُونَ بِهَا وَلَهُمْ أَذَانٌ لَا يَسْمَعُونَ بِهَا I've given them hearts, but they don't even want to use them to understand. I've given them eyes, but they don't want to see. I've given them ears, they don't want to listen. They're just like cattle, like livestock, like beasts, like animals. Rather, they're even worse. Because the beasts, the animals, the livestock, the cows, the goats, the sheep, they're doing what I created them to do. The human being is worse than that because he's not doing what I created him to do. They are far more astray. They are completely heedless. Completely heedless. Aimless. They have no clue where they are. And this is the majority. This includes the Muslims. Just because you are a Muslim doesn't remove you from this category. It includes the Muslims. Because he's talking about the entire genus in this case. Minal jinni wal ins. He's not talking about mina shaitan wal kafirun. No, he's talking about the entire species. Muslims are included in that category. You could be a Muslim, but you're completely heedless and aimless. You have no idea what to do. You don't know what your purpose is in this world. You're jumping from this thing to the other thing. This is why the Prophet wasallam he gave a very interesting statement. He said, يُشِكُ الْأُمَمُ أَن تَدَعَ عَلَيْكُمْ كَمَا تَدَعَ الْأَكَلَةُ إِلَىٰ قَصْعَتِهَا People are going to descend upon you. They are going to consume you the way somebody consumes a plate of food. It was a very astounding statement that the Prophet ﷺ made. And this is why the Sahaba then asked, وَمِن قِلَّةٍ نَحْنُ يَوْمَئِذٍ يَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ Is it because we're going to be few in number? You know, they're asking a logistical question. But then he says, Rasulullah, بَلْ أَنْتُمْ يَوْمَئِذٍ كَثِيرٌ Rather, on that day, you're going to be many in number in that age. وَلَكِنَّكُمْ غُثَاءٌ كَغُثَاءِ السَّيْلِ You're going to be like the froth of the sea, of the water. When the wave crashes upon the shoreline, you get these bubbles and this froth that kicks up. Useless, scum, this is what you're going to be like. You're going to be like scum. That's the original meaning of the word. The, the word scum has got a street application, but has the same meaning essentially. Scum is the froth that, that kicks up when water is running in torrents. And this is what like the scum of the street, you see, useless individuals, pointless, aimless, have got no solid contribution to society. They, they're just wanderers, you know, they go around here, they beg and then they, they cause incidences over there, they rob over there, they, they cause, commit crime over here. This is how you see most of mankind. Many of Muslims are like this. Little bit of fitna takes place. These are the people who keep jumping up and down. 
with their signs and their trumpets and their waves of the flags and everything protesting up and down the street where are they when the muslims are actually suffering where are they when there is famine struck when people are starving when your own fellow muslim brothers and sisters are starving to death where are they they're not, you don't see these people there you don't see all these people protesting out there where are they when there's actual calamity that needs to be resolved but when there is fitna they are all over the place so as soon as fitna starts you will find them these are the people who are out on the streets these are the people who are out on social media with their posts and their memes and their videos and their everything this is what you call scum this is ghutha'un ka ghutha is sail this is where the majority of muslims are and he said the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam wa yanzi anna allah min suduri aduwikum al mahabba al mahabba minkum wa la yaqdifanna allah fi qulubikum al wahn he said allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to remove from the hearts of your enemies he's going to remove fear and awe of you because there was an age when the enemies of islam were fearful and they were in awe of islam and and the muslims they were not just afraid but they were in awe you know they they had praise for they had they they whether they admit it or not they had to praise the muslim for this incredible dedication to the pursuit of knowledge and wisdom and the preservation of it and the transmission of it this is something we've abandoned because that's what the prime quality of the human being is this is what the ability was when he gave you the ability to name things was was so that you can increase yourself in knowledge and understanding and so that that knowledge and understanding takes you closer to understanding who created you and what you owe to him but this has been removed from the hearts of the enemies and instead now in our hearts allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed alwahan and they asked the sahaba ya rasulullah wa ma alwahan what is alwahan He said the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam hubbu dunya wa karahiyatul maut a love of this dunya and a, a hatred of death now this is an astounding statement that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has made because it is precisely the statement that iblis made when he was trying to entice Adam and Hawa this is the prime ideology of the devil where you want your secularism that's where it comes from you want your capitalism your socialism your this ism that ism every ism that you want to take that the modern world has fabricated this is where it comes from when he said ya adam hal adulluka ala shajaratil khuld wa mulkin la yabla should i show you the tree of immortality and the kingdom that never decays this is now what muslims are pursuing a love of the world being the kingdom that does not decay want more wealth bigger better faster does not want it to finish and a hatred of death does not want to die is in pursuit of shajaratul khuld a tree of immortality they don't want to die they don't want to leave this world why because they know where they fall they know deep down deep down inside their hearts they know exactly where they stand regardless of how many salat they pray how many tasbih they pray how many thawbs and and turbans and topis they wear how many days they go hungry without eating anything or how many hajj and umrah they perform regardless of all that they know deep down exactly where they stand they are not oblivious no human being is oblivious as to his station in relation to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala every one of us knows deep down exactly where we stand in so far as our belief in so far as our hypocrisy which is there in so far as our allegiances and where they stand we know exactly where we are we're not oblivious to it this entire concept of secularism is built around this root ideology this pursuit of immortality and this pursuit of a kingdom that does not decay this is where you find all the modern pursuits are geared towards the development of artificial intelligence space travel and space programs these economies these generation of wealth all the the developments that are taking place the mega cities all these things are geared towards an establishment of a kingdom 
that in their perspective, from their point of view, which is the Iblis, the Shaitani point of view, is that this is their engineered paradise. You see, they are defying the rule of God now. They want to establish their own rule. We are making this, we are building it. Whether it falls under the World Economic Forum's Vision 2030 or what is it, uh, the, the, uh, uh, the, the Great Reset or whatever it is, or it falls under a, a particular nation's vision, this, that and the other, or sustainable energy or climate change and, and all this global warming rectification or, or all this stuff, all, whatever it is that you find out there that is geared towards more towards development of the material and the physical and less towards any form of spiritual. And anyone who is partaking in that is a participant of that. You are one of them. This is the majority because this is whom we are following now. This is their ideology. It is the ideology of the Dajjal that is being enacted. It is the ideology of Gog and Magog because this is who they are. They are Mufsiduna Fil Ard. This is their facade is of the highest order. It's not the facade of somebody who just pollutes a small pond of water or throws garbage out there. That's that's very minimal compared to the facade that is of the prime order. The facade that directly and openly challenges divine ordinance to say that we do not want God to sustain us. We do not want God to give us provision. We do not want God's paradise or his judgment on that or his mercy or his kindness or his guidance or anything. We are going to do our own thing. We are going to establish our own laws. This is the highest form of irrationality as well. Now, you as the Muslim or as the Jew or as the Christian, look in the mirror and ask yourself, which pathway are you following? Do you even realize that this is the direction in which you are going? Are you aware of which ideology or which thought, which thought, prime thought or school of thought you are following? Are you actually following the thought that Adam had established and Hawa? Or are you following the thought that was proposed by Iblis? Evaluate it for yourself and be honest with yourself about it. Don't try to justify it the way Iblis justified it. Because you are then going to end up blaming this one, that one and the other one. Instead of looking at yourself and saying, Rabbana dhalamna anfusana. We have wronged ourselves and we ask your guidance. This is primarily what it boils down to. Where exactly do you stand? Do you stand with in the shadow of Gog and Magog and, and the Antichrist? Or do you stand in the light of divine mercy? Because whether or not they succeed or they fail, however many people they end up killing, however many things they destroy, all the things that they do, ultimately they will be held accountable for their actions, you will be held accountable for your actions. And you cannot be among a people looking to liberate others from their suffering when you can hardly liberate yourself from the chains that are holding you down. The same chains that Gog and Magog, that the Dajjal, that Iblis has put upon you. This is what you need to evaluate for yourself. You want to study eschatology, you want to understand the eschatos, you want to understand your role as a character in this final chapter of human history, this is where you need to begin by examining yourself. Who are you? What is your purpose in this world? What have you achieved so far with the time that has been allocated for you? And now, how are you going to turn your direction back towards the straight path? And the straight path in this case does not entail which madhab you are going to follow or which aqidah you are going to follow or which fiqh you are going to establish or how many rakats you are going to play. All those are part of your fard ayn. That is what you are obligated to do. Above and beyond that, are you going to realize who you are as a human being? Are you a khalifa who is self-governing, who can account for himself, who is responsible for himself? Or are you just going to be some other figure in the, in, in the machine 
who, when is prompted by the fitna that arises from these dark forces and demonic forces, you start jumping up and down. You start going out in the streets and waving your flag and waving your sign and singing different slogans as though hoping that this is going to rectify the issues that humanity is going through, the crisis that humanity is suffering. As though this is going to somehow fix the problem that the Palestinians are going under. As though this is somehow going to restore Gaza and, and the West Bank and all of Palestine back to its glory days. Is this where you are? Is this your capability as the human being? If this is your conclusion that this is what it means to be a human being, then unfortunately you are among ulaika humul ghafilun, bal hum adal. You are worse than cattle. You are worse than livestock. You are among those who are completely heedless. This is now all the time that we have for today. This will be the final session of this season. Inshallah, I am going to try and come up with a new season in which we are going to look more deeper into these eschatological elements. We will, inshallah, in that, uh, in that program, explore the nature of the signs, the, the signs themselves, the Antichrist, how it all comes together, Gog and Magog, what is their nature. And we are going to look at all these elements and the different arguments that arise around this and we'll try and reconcile the variances and the differences and hopefully come to an understanding that everyone can appreciate that the world that we are living in is not what we suppose it to be. That changes are taking place right in front of us they are taking place rapidly and with high intensity and they are worsening by the passing moment now, let alone by a number of days or weeks. And hopefully Muslims, Jews and Christians in this regard, but Muslims in particular, can realize exactly what it is that you are here to do. And are you doing what you're supposed to be doing? If you really want to restore Islam back to what it was once, is the manner in which you are doing things, your behaviors, your mannerisms, your, your interactions, is it actually the right way? Or is there a more profound and wiser way in which to do it? And, and should it begin with you at least fundamentally understanding as Muslims, what is our purpose as Muslims? What is our purpose as believers? And what is our purpose as human beings? And until we come to realize that, there is no way, and this is my humble opinion, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala truly knows best, there is absolutely no way that we can rectify our condition and our state. And there is no way that we can then hope for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to just fix our problems for us. As he, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, has himself declared, إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُغَيِّرُ مَا بِقَوْمٍ he Allah is not going to change the condition of a people until they change their own condition first. And so it all falls back on us. Rather than sitting in, in despair and blaming each and every other individual out there and then starting to come up with slogans and saying, you know, if only we had established Khilafah, this would not have happened. Or if, you know, when Imam Mahdi comes, he's going to sort everything out. Or when Nabi Isa comes, he's going to... Uh, we are sitting here hoping. This is wishful thinking. Rather than waiting for that, being in a state of wishful thinking, are we going to be a people who will take the step first towards self-rectification so that we can then go out and rectify others? As John F. Kennedy once said, ask not what your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country. Well, the same applies in concept to the Muslims. Ask not what God can do for you, ask what you can do as a servant of God, as a servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He has chosen you, the human being, to enact justice in this world, but it begins with enacting justice within yourself first. He has chosen you as Muslims to bring the word of Allah to other people and guidance to other people. With all these people out there who keep arguing, why is there so much evil in the world? You know, 
where is God when all these people are dying? Why is Allah letting so much suffering to take place? Where is Allah when all this thing is happening? No, where are you? Where are the people of God? Where are the people of God who should be preventing injustice in the world? Who should be bringing guidance, this guidance that he has sent down as a mercy. Rahmatan lil alameen. As a mercy to all of the realms, all of the worlds. Where, where are you people? Instead of sitting on YouTube and making all these debates and da'wah scenes and da'wah whatevers and da'wah nonsensical things and all these debates between, you know, Muslims and Christians and going out and uh, you've got speakers corner in the UK where you just go and start shouting at each other. That's not da'wah. That is not da'wah. That's just nonsense. That's a waste of time. This is shouting matches and arguments. You want to prove yourself. You're not defending the deen. You're only defending your egos. The deen does not require you to defend. The Quran does not require you to defend it. The Prophet ﷺ does not require you to defend him. If they, they want to make cartoons and you start jumping up and down and start tearing things and burning things, that's not you defending the honor of the Prophet ﷺ. That is not how he behaved when people were mocking him in his life, in his presence. So where are you coming from and starting to burn flags and burning this and burning that, causing destruction that you are the one who has to ultimately clean up and rectify. Why do you descend to that level when you are a people chosen to ascend to a higher level? Anyway, this is all the time we have. Subhanaka wa bihamdika nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk. Rabbana taqabbal minna innaka anta samiyun alim wa tub alayna ya maulana innaka anta tawabu rahim. Birahmatika ya arhamar rahimin barakallahu fikum. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakumullahu khairan.